Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. This is part six of the video series. Uh, we currently have the head completely torn down. We've taken all the parts out of the head and have cleaned them. So now let's actually address the head and get it cleaned up so we can get it ready to reassemble the parts. So let's get started. Okay, this head is not in real bad shape. I think it was cleaned up uh, not too long before the motor gave out. Um, looked like it even had some new head gaskets. Okay, however, we know that the uh, head was not really torn apart because the valves are incredibly dirty. They have obviously had a lot of miles on them, and a lot of these internal parts did. But the actual head itself looked like it was pretty clean, so I'm not exactly sure what, what went on previously. But anyway, um, we're starting out with a pretty good head here. I've already measured the surface here, and it's uh, flat right down to the thousandth, so we don't have to take it to a machine shop. So basically, it's just a matter of getting it cleaned up. We have a bit of carbon buildup here on the top of these uh, cylinders where the valves reside. And um, also, uh, where these valve seats are, you can see it's pretty dirty and they're carboned up too. So we're going to clean this all up. I'm going to just start with a scour pad. And uh, then we'll also um, you know, push air through the block, make sure there's no debris uh, in the block. And um, then uh, we'll go ahead and put the valves in and with some valve grinding compound and, and do some lapping so we get good seals around each of these valve seats. I mean, if you look here closely, um, you can see they're not in great shape. I mean, there's a, matter, a fair amount of rust there. I can't imagine that those valves are sealing very well, and I'll bet you anything the compression is down on this motor. So anyway, let's go ahead and address this head by starting here with uh, where the valve seats are. Looks like most of this is just pretty loose stuff. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do anything uh, too radical here. I'll probably just hit it here with the, with the scour pad. Um, I don't know, we do got a fair amount of carbon buildup down in these, uh, in these ports here where the valves reside. So um, I don't know, we'll see what we can do about that. But for the time being, let's just get uh, most of this surface uh, carbon here off. One of the things that you want to remember when you are cleaning this surface here is not really to hit this, uh, the flat part of the head here um, because this is an aluminum head and it's very easy to gouge it and scar it and uh, mar it up and then you will end up being take, taking it back into a machine shop. So um, you just have to be real careful and don't use anything too abrasive on this. It's better to just do a lot more scrubbing with something less abrasive. This one particular valve port here just has a significant amount of carbon buildup. So I'm just gonna take a little plastic uh, piece here and just scrape away at it. And wow, you can see this stuff just falling out of here. Just a lot of buildup. Look at this. Now, I'm also gonna come in from the top side here as well. So you can see you got pretty much a straight shot there and we should be able to get most of that debris out the more you can get out, the better off you're gonna be. This is all horsepower robbing debris. Okay, and I'm gonna hit some of this with a uh, brake clean. You can see it really uh, cleans it up in there. All right, guys, um, just to let you know, I guess I don't have the patience to uh, clean this up fully. I got most of the debris off of it, uh, but I'm gonna, I feel better just taking it into a machine shop, having them put it into one of their ultrasonic baths and uh, get it all cleaned up really good. I just don't want any debris left in those heads and I'm sure I could get it, but it's just gonna take some time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling down this other one. Uh, anyway, this is what it looks like. This one I think is a little worse shape uh, than the other head. Uh, a little bit more rust. Hopefully we can salvage all of these parts. Uh, we'll see, but anyway, I'm gonna start tearing this one down and then I'm just gonna take both these heads into the machine shop at the same time. Okay, I just ended up taking the uh, cam folders off the intake side of the driver's side head or the left head. And uh, boy, just spinning this cam should spin pretty freely, but there's a significant amount of resistance there. So, interesting. And then, wow, look at all this rust. That's pretty darn bad. 
Okay, before I take these caps off, we uh, have them numbered, so we know what order they go back in. And as I'm pulling these off, <laughs> you can see here on the journals, there's a fair amount of rust. And uh, wow, look at that. So yeah, that's why it's not moving too freely. Pretty darn bad. And even up here on the cap side, just rust everywhere. Boy, once water gets into one of these heads, it just has a way of destroying them. One thing that I did notice um, on the other one, on the other cams uh, that I cleaned up, is they were numbered. So I, you know, I have labeled these. Um, you know, this is the right intake. But if you look closely here, uh, you'll see that that says one in, and this one over here is going to say one ex. So we know which ones are the exhaust and the intakes, and we know what side of the uh, engine they're on. So I'm not gonna bother labeling these since they've already been engraved. Okay, this head's coming apart pretty good with the exception of one hydraulic lifter. It's being very stubborn trying to get it out. So I'm gonna squirt some penetrant down in there, let it sit for a while and see if it'll lift out a little easier. All right, this last lifter finally came out. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of debris in there. I think it may have been starting to rust, but uh, anyway, that debris kind of lodged everything in there. So it made it quite difficult to get out. Yeah, this head definitely has a little more rust in it. As you can see, some of the valve springs are even a little rusted over there as well. We got the valves out now. We can take a look down here into to the ports behind where the valves reside. And uh, yeah, pretty much so very similar to the other one. A lot of carbon buildup in some of these. So anyway, I'll clean this up best I can here. And then this is going to go off to the machine shop with the other head. All right, let's check the springs out and see what they look like. I'll pull them out using a magnet, and wow, they look almost brand new. Look at that. Uh, let's just compare them with one of these. These older ones. There's the diff. Okay, let's get back to work on the heads. I had a couple of uh, cam followers here uh, that were not feeling too good. Um, I've tried lubing these up multiple times and they start to spin okay for a while let them sit overnight and uh, then they feel grindy again the next day also there's a fair amount of pitting on these rollers so I went ahead and replaced them I got uh, two new ones from Melling and uh, these are gonna it seems like they're pretty dry you can hear that but uh, they spin very easy so I'll need to oil them up I ended up taking these uh, heads into the machine shop to have them worked over. The reason being was that uh, these fire rings that were in here, whenever they took the wire out, apparently they took something fairly hard, probably like a screwdriver, and then chiseled them out. So <clears throat> I took it to the machine shop, and what they did was kind of fill the spots that were pitted. Um, you can see some of the pitting here. But anyway, they filled them. And then they went ahead and took about uh, two thousandths off the head. So anyway, they're nice and smooth now. And uh, anything inside this ring here is uh, solid. And that's where the head gasket is going to make the seal. So we should be good to go. So let's turn our attention uh, to the valves. We've already cleaned them up. But now we need to uh, test to see how well they seal. And we'll do a little bit of valve grinding. Uh, to get a better seal if we find that they are not sealing that well. All right, I've ground one valve, and you can see that the uh, color here has turned to kind of a dull gray, which means it's ground down. Here's one that has not been ground yet, and you can still see actually even a little bit of pitting there, but it's still really shiny compared to that. It's dull. And here are the valve seats. Um, same thing, this is the one that's crowned. And here's the one that is not ground yet. And the way I'm testing it is just, uh, I'm putting some tape onto the uh, intake. These are intake valves, so these are the intake ports. Uh, puncture a little hole with a uh, ice pick. And then I have a vacuum here, a vacuum pump. And I'm just uh, plugging it in here. And then I'm waiting to see how long it takes for it to lose its vacuum. Now I'll show you the difference between the one I ground and the unground one. Okay, I put the two valves in. This is the ground one and the unground one. Now we'll put a vacuum on these two and then make a comparison. All right, uh, here's the unground one. And you can see it loses its uh, vacuum pretty quick. And then on this one, the ground one, you can see it holds it much better 
and uh, actually we're going to get right down near the end there kind of holds it until i pull it off so anyway this is definitely an improvement over the end ground one so let's grind the second valve here and see if we can make it similar to the first one all right i'm using this valve grinding compound here from permatex and uh, the way i like to do it is to put it on the valve first because i think it's just easier uh, to evenly distribute it on the valve so i just put a little bit there just and then spin the valve and then once it's on there i'm just going to lube up the valve stem here and insert it into the cylinder head okay and then get my little suction cup here and i put it on the end and then just start twisting it back and forth and you'll hear the uh, tone of the grit change. See how it gets kind of softer? I'm gonna pull it out, lift it out and then start and it gets loud again. Get some new grit in there. Quiet, loud, quiet. Okay, let's pull it out and take a look. Now you wanna make sure that you get all the grinding compound off both the valve and the valve seat. And you definitely don't wanna get any on the valve stem or in the uh, hole for the valve stem because then uh, that grinding compound will start grinding that away, which would be very bad. Okay, let's reinsert the valve and then give it a test. All right, let's see if this is any better now. And it looks about the same, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and continue grinding a little bit more compared to the first one there, that's definitely comes down much slower. All right, I did a little bit more lapping on uh, some of these other valves and uh, I'm really getting good results now. You can see I pumped that up and look how slowly that bleeds off. Very slow. So it just took a little bit more lapping. I'm gonna do the same on the rest of them and uh, see if I get the same results. I bet I do. I mean, that's really good. So anyway, as you can see, uh, very simple, very easy, and uh, I think very effective way to uh, test the valve. All right, I just finished up um, all the uh, valves, both the exhaust and intake. So um, I got them all in there now. So let's go back and just test them all one more time. Uh, this way we can do a relative test, uh, just doing them all at once. We can kind of see the relative differences between uh, each of them and see if there's any that stand out. Okay, so let's just go down the line and check all of them. They all seem to be pretty even. All right, now let's check the exhaust side. Now on the intake side, uh, you have two, what, a port for each of the valves. On the exhaust side, you only have one port for two of the valves. So we only have to check half as many of these. Okay, so these all look pretty good. So I think we're pretty much done. We're currently waiting for valve stem seals to come. So as soon as I get the new valve stem seals, um, we'll go ahead and put the springs and everything back in. And uh, then we can start reassembling the cams and all the uh, gears, timing stuff, and uh, get this back together. And then again, once you're done with this, uh, be sure, you know, pull all the valves out and make sure that you definitely have all the uh, grinding compound out. You don't want any left in there whatsoever. By the way, uh, I forgot to show one thing in the video. I just realized um, I was doing uh, the valve lapping all by hand. Uh, 
this way. And uh, about halfway through, um, said that was a little bit too much work. So I ended up pulling one of the caps off here, attaching the end to the drill, and then just using a drill to spin it. And it was uh, much, much quicker, way more effective. All right, so um, I got the new head out here. I'm just gonna do basically the same thing with another 16 valves. I'm not gonna bother showing that in the video. Uh, this video is getting a little long, so I think I'll call it quits here at this point. And on the next video, which will be part seven, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start reassembling the heads. I should have the valve stem seals by then, and uh, we'll start reinstalling all the cams and the timing gear and all that sort of thing. So anyway, um, I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.